Okay, so Danae, uh, welcome here in Amsterdam. Uh, last time uh, we talked to each other, it was in San Francisco at your, mm -hmm. at your head office. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so welcome, the sun is shining. I'm really happy yeah, you uh, said, being here. You tweeted at me and you said, if you, if you agree to meet with me, I'll do an Indiegogo campaign to fund me flying to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we did, yeah, so yeah. good job. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It was really nice uh, being there. <laughs> it worked. And uh, so, 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 so probably uh, you didn't uh, do your own campaign to get here, yeah. but, uh, but welcome also today at the next web uh, in, uh, in, in Europe. So the next uh, web was very kind to bring me out here. Yeah, so. cool. So you're going to also be on stage uh, today? And, yeah, uh, we're going to yeah. talk today. Great, great. Yeah, yeah looking talking forward. about culture. Ah, it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. but first, talk about uh, about Indiegogo because Indiegogo, one of the world's biggest crowdfunding platforms, I think everybody knows it, and I'll also post a link to the previous video uh, below this video. Mm -hmm. um, when we had the conversation, you were talking about okay, what was the seed that led you to start Indiegogo? Mm -hmm. Can you explain more about that? What, what, yeah, why? Yeah, did you yeah. Start it? So actually, we're and just to quickly up front is we're actually more than crowdfunding right now. Um, we've expanded beyond crowdfunding because what we're what we're on a mission to do is empower people to unite around the ideas that matter to them and together make those ideas come to life. Um, the, some of the biggest barriers in that happening are things like funding. So that was one of the biggest barriers and that's why we really focused on funding first. And when we created Indiegogo, we had kind of at the same time invented crowdfunding because the word didn't exist back then. We were the first player. So Which year was that? It was 2008. Okay. Um, and so now we're doing more than funding though. Again, we're inventing a new industry. We'll call it entrepreneurship empowerment. There's probably a better term for it, but we're helping entrepreneurs every step of the way from concept all the way to reality. So we're doing things like we have a new product called In Demand, which is the ability to actually continue to take funds after your campaign is closed. A lot of people use it as a pre-selling platform. Mm -hmm. And we're now doing uh, partnerships around helping entrepreneurs navigate manufacturing and bringing to market. We just launched a partnership with Arrow. Um, which is bringing a lot of their design, in-house expertise, tools, engineering support to all these entrepreneurs to figure out feasibility of their projects, to, to navigate the manufacturing, as well as you know partnerships with with distribution. So from start to finish, we're there for you. So oh, cool. That but, said, but, uh, but I think it's also really important because then you also uh, uh, at one side you help the entrepreneur to become better entrepreneur to yes. grow faster. Yeah, we're here uh, to empower entrepreneurs and the start, to start uh, not to start but actually be successful. Yeah. Okay. That's, really, <laughs> That's the biggest really difference because crowdfunding is really just f focused on starting folks off yeah. and we we want to see c entrepreneurs be fully successful it's yeah. not just about yeah. helping you start and then leave you leaving yeah. you hanging it's yeah. about helping you start and continue to take the next step yeah. and so but you know in hindsight you know I wouldn't have articulated Indiegogo this way eight years ago and I wouldn't seriously wouldn't have articulated it at all 20 years ago but um, the, the motivation to start Indiegogo has been the same since the beginning. And that's the story that um, you're asking about, which is I grew up, I think the reason I started Indiegogo was um, I grew up kind of very acutely aware of how hard entrepreneurship was. My parents were small business owners. Um, it, they ran a brick and mortar, low profit business, but they had huge integrity, loyal customers, um, worked their asses off, but can never take their business to the next level because they didn't know the right people. And one of the biggest barriers they met was, was funding capital. Um, and so I just kind of grew up with awareness of how hard entrepreneurship was. And um, I actually then started helping filmmakers and theater producers try to bring their projects to life by night when I was trying to learn about how money actually worked by day, the traditional way in finance. And um, started to fail thinking I could help them because I have all this finance experience, I actually was completely failing them because my finance experience meant, meant nothing. What really, they really needed was just the right connection, the right person, the right person to write that check. And I actually massively failed at bringing a theater production to life. Um, an Arthur Miller play, which was about racial profiling, which was right after September 11th in New York City. And um, that was, you know, racial profiling was a very hot topic post 9-11. Um, so I was thinking this is the perfect time to bring this play to life and totally failed. Audience loved it, actors loved it, we put up a one night event, it was wonderful. The investors there actually personally loved it, but because they had these other objectives they couldn't invest and it all fell to nothing. And so that's when I realized where the core of entrepreneurship was broken, it was that it was completely like the, the bringing it, you know, getting this play off the ground was completely dependent on these third party gatekeepers and the people that wanted it to happen, which are the actors in the audience, they didn't actually have the power to make it happen. So that was the big aha moment, and that's where it drove me back to thinking through how can we change the game, change finance specifically, finance around studying, starting ideas, so that it's the people that decide what ideas happen and not just third party gatekeepers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with that, 
Um, and it, I, want, I don't want to like put down the gatekeepers. It's not like they're evil people. It's the system. It's the mm -hmm. system where just a few people decide on behalf of the many. It's the representative system, which doesn't always work well. We've seen in politics. It doesn't always work the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, uh, so. but I think it's also about, about they're also making decisions uh, that depends on some more practical values. Yes. And, and uh, so they are t uh, looking to the numbers and maybe... Uh, yeah, the their motivation to, to put, put something in is they're only looking for profit versus um, when people fund stuff on Indiegogo, they're looking for the thing to actually exist, but they're also looking to support an idea. They're also looking to support individuals. We call them the four P's, people, passion, participation, and perks. And if you appeal to just one of those motivations and one of those P's, you're just not going to do as well unless you appeal to all four. Yeah. So because people are human beings, we, we, don't, we don't put our money into things just to get a return. We get, put our money into things because it's what we care about, mm -hmm. um, because we like you, because that we want to support you, um, and because they want the actual thing to exist and maybe get a perk back for it. So there's, it's a much more um, complicated motivation, but it's much more human motivation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think Indiegogo's really unleashed is, is the human side to come out again. And again, for the human needs to be the reason why things get funded, not just one person's interest in making profit. Yeah. Um, that said, when we launch equity crowdfunding, which is coming in the future, um, I think what's going to be super interesting is that we'll have now a fifth P at play, which is profit, and we'll allow regular people, Main Street people, not just mm -hmm. investors, to actually invest in things. And a lot of people are speculating around, oh, that's going to, is that going to take it away from the perks business or what's going to happen? I actually think it's speculation because we just have to see what happens. But I think that adding this fifth P is just going to make the other four P's even more relevant. Mm -hmm. Like the things that are going to get invested in are are not just things that potentially will make a profit, but the things that will make a profit and um, allow you to support people you want to support. And maybe if it's a local business, for example, or a coffee shop, yeah. like you're going to invest in that because like, yeah, I want to, I know, I know my neighborhood. I know everyone like here drinks coffee. That's a good investment. But I also know that I like the person who's starting that com that coffee shop. I want to be able to go there mm -hmm. and it'd be my coffee shop. <laughs> like there's a lot more motivation at play versus just the money part. And so yeah. when we introduce the money part, I think still there's going to be a variety of motivations. And I think the the endeavors that appeal to all all P's will do the best. Yeah. We'll and, see. And, 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 and at what way do you think, because there's also, uh, I'm also sometimes worrying, uh, not only in crowdfunding, but also in the sharing economy, mm -hmm. because uh, normally what you say, okay, uh, we have an investor or we have some, somebody working in a bank, mm -hmm. and he or she, uh, 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 the work is okay to see, okay, what is the risk? They are, have really good education for that. But the way you look to the, invi at, uh, to the individual, uh, just uh, you and me, mm -hmm. uh, or let's talk for myself, I have no idea about, okay, how to, uh, to, to calculate the risk uh, and when you're having about pre-sales and donation campaigns then it's uh, many times it's it's may, maybe a max of 1000 euro uh, you invest mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. money is okay it's a lot of money but it's still uh, 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 you will survive uh, uh, when you lose it mm -hmm. but at what way uh, are you going to 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 make sure that also the the the, the investors part uh, so, uh, so people who are, who are providing the money uh, uh, to the platform mm -hmm. are being protected and, and that mm -hmm. they're also really are really clear in communication about that they know mm -hmm. what they're buying yeah so, uh, first of all, it's clarifying what verb they're doing. Are they funding, are they buying, or are they investing? So that's one thing that we're <laughs> very focused on because the verb determines what you get in return and what kind of certainty there is. So another thing that we're doing is um, making it very clear at what stage an uh, something is in its life cycle. So is it at the prototype stage or is it about to ship? Um, so is this a pre-sale um, experience or is this more of a funding experience? Um, right now we have campaigns, funding campaigns, anybody can do it. We also have in-demand campaigns. So in-demand is our kind of like our pre-sale product. So those are for, kid, those are for entrepreneurs who um, are, are really about to ship and it's just a matter of pre-selling and figuring out the right demand and where the users are. Yeah. Um, and then eventually we'll have equity crowdfunding which is the ability to invest. So. Yeah. It's just about being clear about what it is that you're doing. Um, but throughout all three though, it's about being transparency around information. Yeah. What, what is, what's the stage of the company at? What are the risks involved in the company? And again, letting people decide on their own. They, yeah. ha they know themselves better than anybody. With this information, is what's their risk appetite? Yeah. And is this something, they are they an early adopter type person? They want to get on the early, knowing that there might be 
more bumps along the road because once you're in prototype stage, you have a long journey ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but if you're about to ship, it's you're a little closer to getting it. So yeah. just making that clear, and so you right size expectations. And you know, if you're getting in early, it's a long journey. You're going to join the journey. That's actually another thing we're doing is like really making it engaging for backers to not just be the providers of capital, mm -hmm. but like contributors to the entrepreneurial journey, yeah. like yeah. potentially help build the thing or yeah. market yeah. or whatever. There's so much more we can be doing, which we're excited yeah. to do. Yeah, but I think that's, that's also really interesting that you're now also going to engage more in the complete entrepreneurial journey yes. uh, because then mm -hmm. you also have some more uh, uh, promises uh, to make to the investors because mm -hmm. okay we're going to to help them to, to grow uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, be because people also trust in the brand in the go go mm -hmm. that, uh, that this also will uh, will be uh, on the benefit for the investors but also from the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think it's really interesting and 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 I mean we're that's why we're we're helping entrepreneurs from idea all the way to reality not yeah. just the funding the funding's a, a key critical step but you know we j we started Indiegogo to break down barriers to entrepreneurship. Um, what we saw is like people like my parents were struggling, the filmmakers I was helping were struggling. They were struggling to get their ideas off the ground because they just didn't know the right people. And the biggest kind of area where that problem had wreaked the most havoc was in funding. So we started there. Yeah. And actually, if you asked me five years ago, what's our mission? It was to democratize finance. Like, let's break down that barrier. Now we've done that. <laughs> it's like, We've um, almost, it's like um, now that we've really helped ideas get going, we've also realized there's other challenges too. Like in a way, you didn't, we didn't meet the manufacturing challenges until actually allowing people to actually get there, which they yeah. weren't even getting to that point because they weren't even getting past the funding. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now they're, yeah. so it's a, it's, this is the beauty of innovation. This is why it's exciting to be at Indiegogo because then if you had asked me five years ago, well, why are you, why do you care about democratizing access to capital? It's the same answer I gave 10 years ago I, and I give today. It's because we want to help entrepreneurs be entrepreneurs. Yeah. We want, and we think the way to fix it is kind of make entrepreneurship more collaborative. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why getting the people involved and allowing anybody to shape the world around them and create this open ecosystem where it can happen. And yeah. we can support entrepreneurs throughout the whole, the whole journey. So yeah. our mission is, again, to you know, empower people to unite around the ideas that matter to them and together bring those ideas to life. So, there's a lot of pieces of that. Funding's a huge piece, manufacturing, making for other entrepreneurs that are not like in products, businesses, but maybe like small businesses. There's more we're gonna be doing there around yeah. helping them get set up and launch yeah. and open a market yeah. and build yeah. and build that customer base. Yeah, yeah but I think it's also really uh, good because you, then you also make a unique proposition mm -hmm. because then you're not just another crowdfunding platform with mm -hmm. all respect, but then you're really unique mm -hmm. in helping entrepreneurs uh, uh, in Yeah, I mean, journey. what's interesting is we didn't choose the word crowdfunding to define us. That kind of got put on us. We're like, okay, fine. But, and again, when we started, the word didn't exist and we didn't have any competition. Like it was us trying to say, hey, the world sucks sucks for entrepreneurs, we're gonna make it better. <laughs> and here's our first attempt. And we created this financing platform that people-powered financing platform that was our start at kind of focused on the funding challenge. And then said world said, oh, that's what crowdfunding is. We're gonna call you that. And then there's other competition that popped up yeah. and followed suit. But again, we're about more than just crowdfunding. Like again, our goal is not to be crowdfunding. Our goal is to help entrepreneurs. And if it means have creating, inventing crowdfunding, we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it means inventing the next step, we're doing that, yeah. of helping anybody get access to manufacturing support and, and distribution and all the, all the steps around bringing your idea to market. And that's, that's what we're really focused on right now. And, and that's why entrepreneurs are using us, are coming to us now. Yeah. It's like, they know that once funding is done, they have more challenges with pre-sales or with uh, actually making their product and, and user testing and all that kind of stuff. So. That's why they're using Indiegogo. Yeah. It's not just about the funding. No. It's not, again, just about starting you and leaving you hang hanging. <laughs> no, but uh, I think it's really good because then you also take more responsibility uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the whole process. Mm -hmm. And we're now in, in Amsterdam, so we're mm -hmm. in, uh, at, at the next web in, in, in Europe. So how mm -hmm. is Indiegogo going in, uh, in Europe? It's great. Uh, we have over a third of our business is ideas from not US. Um, which is great because most of our team is in the U.S., but we have now team outside the U.S. Um, just here in, I just looked this morning, like in here in Amsterdam, like I think one of the largest campaigns of, of record-setting campaigns across any platform happened on Indiegogo from, from Amsterdam um, in Europe. So, and that was the campaign for Kaiser, which is the inflatable air lounge, mm -hmm. <laughs> which has raised over $4 million on Indiegogo. Yeah. So it shows that it's really struck a chord with people around the world and it happens to be from Amsterdam. But then we also have um, amazing entrepreneurs here like the women who started um, 
bellies beyond borders, which they're trying to solve two problems at once, which is the problem of food waste, throwing a lot of good food away that could be eaten, and then the challenge of feeding refugees who are coming in droves mm -hmm. and need help there. And so they're bringing the two sides of the coin together and they've created a, um, a mobile food waste kitchen to use food waste to feed refugees. Um, and they've used Indiegogo to fund it at, you know, I think they only needed like $5,000 mm -hmm. or 5,000 euros and they got it. So. Um, Success, success is not bigger, it's not necessarily better. It's about, we're going to go, go, I didn't go, we're about helping you achieve your goals, whatever they are, mm -hmm. and whatever success looks like to you, whether it's yeah. $5,000 and opening the kitchen or five, you know, $4 million mm -hmm. and getting people to relax in an, a, an efficient and efficient way across the world. And, and, what, uh, and, and what are your next strategy for Europe? Uh, what are our next what? A, a, a strategy. Mm. Uh, because because uh, th th there are many different countries uh, with many different uh, cultures, uh, regulations, mm -hmm. uh, everything mm -hmm. is different in, 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 in every country. But below the line, we're all humans. So that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's we a, are uh, all humans. That's a good thing. I think thing. right now, there, we're, what we're also proving, I think if it, we do our job right, I think we're going to prove that Silicon Valley is not the center of entrepreneurship. I wholeheartedly don't believe, believe it's not. I don't hope so. I hope not. <laughs> like, I mean, we're not going to talk about it, but diversity is like the <laughs> recipe for actually doing really good innovation and bringing all ideas to life. So um, Silicon Valley is a tiny part of the world mm -hmm. <laughs> that has a lot of good stuff happening. It is not the only place in the world where entrepreneurship is happening. And Indiegogo is kind of out to prove that. Like, we're unleashing entrepreneurship everywhere. You do not have to go to Silicon Valley to get money. Like, that's bogus. That's stupid. We're going to look at that as, like, black and white television 20 years from now. You know, we were like, remember when black and white TV was only black and white? We're going to say, remember when we had to, like, feel like we had to go to Silicon Valley to, like, get money? Get innovation. <laughs> so stupid. Like, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, because entrepreneurship is not in Silicon Valley. It's in all of our minds and our hearts and our hustle. And, yeah. like, if we can just... And, and we're creating things and building ideas all over the place and there's audiences everywhere. And if we can be that platform, that tool that helps you bring your idea to life, wherever you are, to your audiences, wherever they are, that is what our mission is. That, I mean, that is what we're trying to do because um, entrepreneurship is everywhere. It is not just in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and I think we will have done our job when people stop thinking that, when they realize, oh my God, there's so much creativity everywhere like i just that it's that self-fulfilling prophecy thing that just needs to get busted and we're, we're working our darndest to, to bust it and because there are like just look on indiegogo look at all the campaign just in amsterdam there was another one a guy created this morning he's um he raised over ninety thousand dollars for he realized that i mean what i love about amsterdam i think we were talking is how many people ride bikes here which is amazing um, and I'm thinking, how can we get that in San Francisco? And, um, but he realized, in, in seeing that, he also realized that all the manufacturing of bikes has mm. left the country. It's not here anymore. Yeah. And so he sees that as a problem. Like, and so he's tackling that. He's basically created a company, uh, I think it's called Monumono, that um, builds, builds um, bikes that are super low maintenance but high quality in, in the Netherlands using car yeah. technology. Yeah. Um, and so they, they've been successful raising money and getting their, the, this bike manufacturing business off yeah. the ground. And you see uh, many corporates, they're really struggling and at the same time it's also a truck running by, so we yeah. need to hear a sound. But uh, uh, many big or kitchen organizations are also struggling because they see all these new platform businesses popping up. They're growing mm -hmm. really fast, uh, mm -hmm. starting in Silicon Valley uh, most of the time, but then uh, go across the world. Mm -hmm. If, uh, like when I would be an innovation manager of a big bank, I'm mm -hmm. not, but uh, in case. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think, uh, uh, what is the best advice that you could give from your experience for existing organizations about how to, to really uh, uh, use these new dynamics of mm -hmm. uh, 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 being, being an entrepreneur you're also using for Indiegogo mm -hmm. for their own business? Well, first, I, we actually have large corporations now starting to use Indiegogo because Indiegogo has become the more efficient and fair weight and uh, cost-effective way and customer-driven way to bring ideas to life. It is actually a better way. It's also more democratic and more fair, but it's also a better way than the old school way of um, doing all this research behind closed doors and doing focus groups, which are only somewhat helpful in data, the, in sending you in the right direction of what you're, mm -hmm. to tell you what your customers want or need or who they are. So we had GE, for example, 
it used to take them four years to develop a product, to test and develop a product, and it still wasn't a guarantee that it was going to actually succeed and resonate with our customers. So it was a problem, but that's the only approach they had. That's that's what they were in the business to do. They like had capital to go do that. Yeah, we're outside. <laughs> but um, um, so that yeah, that's what the trucks say. <laughs> Maybe that process doesn't work very well. So. But it was all the, it was the only process that they had. And so when Indiegogo came along and we said, yo, let's put the power in the hands of the people. And here's a, here's a systematized, practical way where people decide which ideas happen. It's organized. It's pretty efficient. Like, it actually turned a light bulb on their head. They're like, oh, my God, we need to be doing this. If we really want to be making products that we know that our customers want, mm -hmm. we have to let them be part of the drive be in yep. the driver's seat. And yep. Indiegogo allows, our, allows us to work with our customers, let them decide what we make. Yep. And so after four, you know, process, after a period of time where it took them four years to develop a new product, they've um, now started using Indiegogo to test ideas. And they brought that time from four years down to four months. And they've dropped the cost of innovation 20-fold. Yeah. Um, and it's all, and it doesn't mean just by doing an Indiegogo doesn't mean it's going to work. But it'll tell them very strongly what do customers want, what are they willing to pay, what um, features do they want, all that kind of stuff. And specifically yeah. on Indiegogo, what's super unique to our platform is we allow you to test all of these assumptions. Mm -hmm. You can swap your perks, you can test price points, you can test colors. Like you can't do that on a platform where your campaign is fixed. Mm -hmm. So. If you can't change the stuff and test your assumptions, you can't learn and yeah. you can't actually figure out who your market is. So yeah. that's another benefit. And that's why Indiegogo is like this lean funding, lean approach to, to launching your business. So um, that's kind of um, what, and what also is cool about that is we have these now large corporations who are running these campaigns and bringing their audiences, which is then helping all the other entrepreneurs on Indiegogo access those customers and those backers. So the whole ecosystem is really, really, really working. So my advice, though, to large companies and large banks, for example, is ask yourself, what, what business are you in and what's your mission? Is your mission to just loan money to people and businesses or is your mission to help businesses thrive? Because if it's the latter, then you need to really look at what model you're using and is that model actually working the best for what your mission is? Yeah. And then if it's not, talk to us. We're partnering yeah. with yeah. large corporations, <laughs> banks, stuff like that. That's not just a pitch, cool. but I, I mean, I do see a future where ideas are kind of incubated on Indiegogo, all kinds of ideas, and surfaced, whether it's to banks or to large corporations or to venture capitalists or to the people directly and never have to go there. Like, I really think this concept of banks and corporations with these big closed walls, that's just going to disappear. Yeah, I, yeah, it's just, and it's, so. and it's, it's, it's going to be that companies are on the same team as their customers again, and they're just working together yeah. to figure stuff yeah. out. And yeah. it's much more fluid. But I think the first, my world. I think vision. the first step is put the customer <laughs> in your central. Put the customer <laughs> put first. The customer first. But yeah. And, and uh, ask and yourself why, what, why are you here? Why do yeah, you exist? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the most because I'm also just bought a house. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the whole backing process. Uh, there's mm -hmm. also going to be crafting for, for, for houses uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in the Netherlands in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, but they're not uh, finished yet. So I have to go to a bank. Mm -hmm. And I think the first step is to put the customer mm -hmm. at first place, mm -hmm. not the processes. So I yes. think it's really important. Yeah. So, and, um, uh, uh, talking about entrepreneurship, uh, one of the last questions uh, is um, uh, uh, entrepreneurship is also about learning and also about uh, 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 making mistakes. I think yep. also platforms like Indiegogo also really help you to accelerate to, to, to learn and to make mm -hmm. mistakes. But, mm -hmm. but in your own entrepreneurial career, mm -hmm. what was the, your, your biggest, biggest mistake, mistake or, your, or your mo <laughs> maybe your most interesting mistake you know, where you uh, got your, your, your it, most valuable lesson out? Yeah, I actually think it's related to this. I used to think I had... The biggest piece of advice I give entrepreneurs is don't wait for perfect. Like I was, I grew up, I actually, I didn't get in, I didn't start Indiegogo because I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I started Indiegogo because I wanted to solve a massive problem that was bothering me at my core and it kept recurring and surfacing in my life, whether it was my parents or these filmmakers I was trying to work with. It was like the problem that just wouldn't go away. It's like I had to deal with it and to deal with it and solve it, I had to like start a company to do it and to do it well, I had to use technology. So I actually say, I, my goal is not to be a tech entrepreneur. Uh, my goal is to solve this problem and I'm using entrepreneurship and technology to do that. Um, which that's actually another piece of advice is stay focused on your goal and every like technology entrepreneurs, those should be means to a greater end, not the end itself, yeah. which I'll talk about today. But 
in that process, though, I kind of in the back of my head, I always thought that entrepreneurs were cert these certain types of people, and I'm like, and I didn't see my I didn't see myself in that persona. I think part of that problem was that the way entrepreneurship was branded was super exclusive <laughs> to a certain group of people, and I wasn't included in that. I think a lot of it too is that there were certain very big differences between me and my parents. I mean, I saw my parents like hustling like crazy, and I was someone who loved school. I loved structure. I loved learning in a organized way, and like that made me super happy. And so the hustling, I didn't know if I had the hustle in me. Like I just didn't know because I didn't, I didn't, I never had actually had an opportunity to, to do it. So again, I, I got pulled into entrepreneurship because I wanted to solve this problem and help entrepreneurs and help people make their ideas happen, which meant helping entrepreneurs. And I had to become an entrepreneur myself to do it. And, um, what I had to let go of was this concept of kind of waiting for perfect. Mm -hmm. Like if you wait for perfect and you figure it all out in your head, you'll never start. Yeah. And maybe in my learning of that and then learning how we've actually built Indiegogo, <laughs> we've actually built it in a way to help you learn and, and be okay with the fact and honor the fact that you don't know everything. You don't know exactly who your customer is. You have a good idea. You've talked to a bunch of people, but let's go test that and actually yeah. know. But, um, and, and it's everything's an iteration after that. So like you just have to keep iterating. That is that is the journey, and it's not trying to be perfect up front. So that's my biggest advice um, for entrepreneurs of all kinds: men, women, old, young, everybody, European, yes. American, China. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of Chinese entrepreneurs now coming out um, of the gate because they there's you know there's a ton of innovation happening there, and they're sitting on a lot of the kind of manufacturing ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So it's like a perfect opportunity for you know young entrepreneurs old entrepreneurs first-time entrepreneurs to like get their ideas out there and so we're doing a lot of work there to help ideas come out of that country too yeah cool so i think it's really interesting to, uh, to see you uh, especially because i also interviewed you in san francisco one half yeah. year ago to, uh, to see your own your, your own journey yeah so so let's uh, talk again in one half year okay uh, <laughs> let's do, maybe do at an at another place uh, somewhere in the yeah, world somewhere in the world <laughs> and uh, so thanks for the interview good luck yeah. with your journey thank you and, you too uh, keep in touch well all right <laughs> Take care. Good luck, everybody.